We're going to talk about how a smart contract can own an NFT, and we're going to discuss gas-efficient ways to transfer ownership. I've created a simple NFT over here. For the sake of convenience, I've had the constructor just mint token number 10 to whoever launched the contract, so that we don't have to mint the NFT in a separate transaction. And the goal will be to get the game contract to own token 10, but also allow the original owner of token 10 to be able to withdraw it. Of course, this could be done for arbitrary token numbers. Okay, this would possibly look something like this. Let's say you're building a game and you need to deposit an NFT into it. Maybe we would have function, deposit, NFT, and we would specify which NFT that we own, which would be the token ID. In this case, it's 10, but we need this to work for arbitrary tokens. And ultimately what we're aiming to do is take that NFT and conduct a safe transfer from the person who is trying to deposit their token to this contract. And we would be transferring the token ID that they specify. Okay, this looks pretty safe. We don't really have to worry at this point that someone's going to try to transfer someone else's token ID. Because if you try to transfer someone else's tokens, token ID, then the ERC721 contract won't let you. Okay, let's see what happens when we try to run this. It's not gonna work, but I want you to see the failure cases so that you understand the motivation behind the code that we're going to write after this. So let's compile this and there is a problem. Uh, yes, I meant token ID. Okay, try that again. And there is still a problem. Oh, this would be safe transfer from. Okay, just to see that safe transfer from, if you look inside of the ERC721 specification, that's the signature that we need to match. It's uh, from, to, and the token ID. Now, optionally, you can supply uh, data, which is actually something we're going to get to later. But the particular safe transfer that we are looking for is this one, the one that doesn't specify data. So here you can see that this takes the same arguments that we're supplying to it inside of our code. And I'm first of all going to deploy the NFT because I'm going to need the address that this game will need to know about so that it knows where to call safe transfer on. Now we take the game and we supply the address of the NFT and deploy it. Okay, because I am the one who, is, who created the NFT, I'm also the owner of token 10, which you will be able to see like this. So this is the address that I'm using, which should be familiar if you've used Remix for a while. Now let's go to the game and try to conduct the transfer. So I will close this, open the game, and try to deposit token number 10 in there. And when we look, it says it was reverted. The caller is not the token owner or approved. Okay, this is coming from the ERC721 contract. So when I look for this string, okay, this is where it's coming from. And that's because that safe transfer is ultimately making a call to transfer, which is going to check if the sender is either the approved or owner. Now, in this case, the sender is actually no longer message.sender, which is the address I'm using. It's actually the smart contract. So message.sender is x 0x56a, blah, 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 and not 0x5b3. Now, the ERC721 protocol has a workaround for this. You don't have to be the owner of a token in order to transfer the token. You could also be approved for it. So if we enable the approval functionality for that particular token ID, then this check will pass and it will not uh, revert with this require error message over here. So let us do that. We will open up item and we are going to approve token number 10 for this other smart contract. And we transact. Now this smart contract is has the permission to conduct transfers on our behalf. However, when we try to deposit it again, we get an error message again. ERC721 transfer to non-ERC721 receiver implementer. Okay, so the error message changed, which is a good thing. And let's check for this error message. And again, it's happening under the transfer step. So when we conduct a transfer, it's going to make a transfer, but it's going to conduct this function check over here. And what does this function check do? Well, first of all, it checks if the receiver is a contract, it's going to make sure that it's following the ERC721 receiver protocol. And it's going to make sure that it gave the correct response, which this looks kind of scary, but don't worry about that. And the other alternative is it will just say, okay, if it's not a contract, just return true and allow this to happen. Because I'm able to transfer this token to another non-contract address. So if I was to do a safe transfer from my own address to a regular wallet and transfer token 10, this will work. Uh, which I can demonstrate. So let's send it to this new address over here from uh, my old address and transfer token 10 and it works. Okay, that's because this is not a contract. But if I try to send it from this address to the contract, it's not going to work. Again, because this is a contract address. Well, in this situation, first of all, now I have to set the approval again. The smart contract to allow token 10, luckily that's still there. So I'm just going to hit transact again. And when I try to do call the deposit NFT with this new thing, it says revert. It's not the receiver. Okay, so how can we fix this? Well, luckily, all we have to do is just copy and paste some code for the most part. If we implement IERC721 receiver 
then it's going to interact with this function. So safe transfer looks for a function that matches this signature and then calls it and expects it to get this back. Well, let me show you what this looks like. So what you're gonna do is copy and paste this and uh, put it over here. Uh, but first of all, you need to make sure that you are implementing the IERC721 receiver. So I've imported that and I'm going to say it is a receiver. So this will make the ERC165 check pass. And then we actually implement this. So this needs to return this. Okay, dot selector is just giving you the function selector of this function. So we save it and it compiles. Now we have to get rid of the old contracts and redeploy it. So let's do that. And then again, we have to approve the game inside of item for our address. So we're going to approve the game to have authority over token 10. And then now we are going to deposit token 10 into the game. And it worked. And you can actually see that the owner of token 10 is the smart contract over here, 9BF and 9BF. All right, now we presumably want to be able to get the token out. So we would add a function to it withdraw it function withdraw let me close this so you can see it more clearly withdraw nft and we would specify which token we want and this is an external function and we will simply call safe transfer in the other direction safe transfer from address this to message.sender all right what's wrong with this good. Anybody can call this. So the first address might deposit the token and then somebody else comes along and steals the token. So we need to have some bookkeeping to see who originally deposited it so that only that address can take it out. So let's have our bookkeeping over here. We're, we're going to have a mapping of uint256 to address and this is going to be original owner. All right. So whenever the token comes in, we just remember who owned it originally. So when the person requests it back, we can check if the address matches. Let's do that. We will set original owner of token ID message sender and on this side we're going to require that the original owner of token id is equal to message.sender not original owner okay let's see if we're able to get the token in and out using this mechanism and we will first have to approve the game contract for token id 10 and then deposit token 10 and we see that token 10 is owned by the game and when we call withdraw on token 10 then we can now see that owner of has gone back to this address which is the one that i'm using over here okay so this is all well and good so far but this is actually not the optimal way to do this for a couple of reasons we have two steps involved you have an approve step and then an actual transfer step which just approving by itself is an entire ethereum transaction which tends to be costly and then we have of the actual deposit step, which is going to make an external call to the NFT contract and conduct another transfer. And making a cross-contract call is not cheap, so we want to minimize that. There's actually an implicit cross-contract call again, because when we call the safe transfer, the safe transfer hands control over to this uh, NFT, which is also going to call on ERC721 received to see if this particular contract is able to receive ERC721 tokens. So we have two cross-contract transfers. Now, if you think about this carefully, we don't actually have to do it this way. What we could do is directly transfer the NFT to the contract and just put our bookkeeping inside of on ERC721 received like this. And we don't have to go through deposit NFT because we know that the safe transfer function is going to call this just by way of reminder. If we look again at the safe transfer, it's going to check if the recipient is a contract. And if it is, it's going to call that function on ERC721 received with these arguments over here, which you will note matches what we have over here. The operator is the person who's conducting the transaction from is the person who owns the token and the token ID is the token ID, obviously. <laughs> Sorry. And data is additional thing that allows us to supply arguments, which I'll talk about later. Okay, let's see that in action. And now what we are going to do is directly transfer to the contract. Okay, so we're going to call safe transfer from and we're going to say from is our own address to is the game and token ID is 10, of course. The important thing is we're relying on safe transfer from to ultimately call on ERC721 receive and get and make sure that this function is triggered. So let's transact this. It seems to have gone through. Now let's double check to make sure that the owner of the token is in fact the contract and the address of the contract is 580 blah, 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 C1, 580 blah, 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 C1. 
on. Okay, great. Now withdraw should work if this original owner was set to the token ID. Now, actually, I believe that's public, so we should be able to see it directly, right? And so the original owner of 10 is... Hey, wait a second, that doesn't look right. What is that? That's supposed to be coming from here. How come these don't match? All right, now you have to think about it. Well, you might be thinking, wait a minute, isn't this the game? Well, no, because the game is not message.sender here. This is actually the NFT, right? So message.sender, when, when this function was called, it was actually being called by this contract. This is the contract that's making the call to on ERC721 received. So what you actually should be doing is setting this to from, okay? Operator is someone who might be operating on behalf of the token. So if I had control over your tokens and then I said safe transfer from your address to this contract and I can have control over your tokens if you give me approval, then you would know it's coming from the operator. But we actually care about the owner and want to make sure that the owner is able to withdraw it. But depending on your application, uh, this may or may not be useful to you. And But just to show that the withdrawal won't work, let's do that really quick. If I try to withdraw NFT token 10, then I'm going to get a revert saying I'm not the original owner. Okay, let's do it with the correct logic. And here I've redeployed the contracts. Now let's directly transfer our item to the game. So I'm going to need the address of the game. And I'm going to say safe transfer from, uh, well, to the smart contract token ID 10 and from myself. So I transact and we see that the owner of token 10 is the game, 09 blah, blah, blah. And I should be able to get the item back. So withdraw token 10, the transaction succeeded. And now the owner